When you go to a swap meet or a rummage sale, inevitably there's going to be something there that catches your eye. And uh, this just happened to be on the way out the door one day at a ham radio swap meet. And sometimes the thing you find sort of dictates the what's going to happen to it. In this case, it happened to be, and you run across these a fair, at least I do, at, at swap meets. Old speaker cabinets pulled out of schools. People get a hold of these things. And sometimes they're not good because the speaker that comes in them is line level speaker, which means the, the impedance of the speaker is weird and the speakers are kind of useless at that point. And if anybody actually knows a way to use those, please let me know because I have two or three of those hanging around. But in this case, this this little piece brought me back to uh, my school days. Um, I have been called down to the office more than once, but uh, for the most part, it was a pleasant experience um, getting the daily announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance and things like that. Um, so anyway, let's 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 here's here's let's take a quick look. Here you go. Please come to the office immediately. It actually it hung on the wall like this. There we go. You see the kind of triangular shape that, that hung down and this pointed down at the students and uh, the voice of the principal or whoever came out of it and uh, announced the bake sales and uh, whatever else was going on that day. Today's lunch will be lasagna, garlic bread, green beans, fruit cup, and alternate lunch will be pizza. So this one happened to have a really nice little uh, speaker inside it too uh, that was useful. It was actually a f either a four or an eight ohm speaker, and um, so of course the price was right. It was toward the end of the swap meet. The guy made me a heck of a deal on uh, on it, and it it followed me home. It sat in my basement for months, and I kind of scratched my head thinking. Where am I going to find a chassis to, small enough to fit in this thing and, and still make uh, make some sound with? And eventually, I figured out I happened to have a sub-chassis from a console. I, I have actually made two or three amps out of that thing before. I'll put a link to, to one of them. But, uh, and, and it actually was, was like a 20-watt amp. In this case, we're going to go a lot smaller, and so I had to put some plates and things over it. What happened was the plan finally came together in my head and the right parts and uh, and everything else. So here's the here's the back of the amp. Here's the business end of it. You can see it's a nice little little qualm speaker. Uh, so what I did was I went in and I put a transformer on top of it, something that would handle like a 6v6. And in this case, what I did was, and I built you can kind of see in there how I've um, repaired the chassis a little bit. It had some pretty good sized holes in it. You're only noticing two tubes in there and a very small transformer right here. That's actually the power transformer, if you can believe it. That came out of a reel-to-reel -reel and it has taps for 6 and 12 volt tubes. Um, I think it was it was powering 12 AU7s, 12 AT7s, something like that. And when I saw that thing originally, I said, that, that can't be. It's got to be some kind of output transformer. And, and come to find out, no, it was not. Uh, these show up in wall and sack, uh, reel-to-reels. And uh, you can find them online sometimes. So I've got another one. I'm going to make another out, amp out of at some point. But just a s standard sort of champ style volume there. Um, went ahead and put a power light in it. And the the power tubes uh, power tube in this is a six K six which outputs about three three and a half watts, and the preamp tube is a six SL seven. Uh, this happens to be an old Soviet one right here. I like them; they have pretty good tone. I've got US six SL sevens. I plug in. Uh, it really just I happen to have it, and and I, I threw it in there. Home, uh, let's say, uh, volume level. Two K sixes are actually really good, um, even maybe slightly better than a six V six. Now the cool thing is about this amp, I could actually plug a six V six in there if I really wanted to. Um, I don't think it would stress that little transformer out too too much. Um, I think it would be be okay. 
And the reason you only see a couple of tubes in here is, is precisely because of that small transformer. I did not want to stress a thing out uh, with a rectifier tube. What I did was put a little full bridge rectifier in it and away we go. Now, what that does is it tightens up the sound just a tick and it sounds fine to me. You really don't notice the fact that there's no 5Y3 or, or other tube rectifier in there. But yeah, so with that small transformer, uh, I'm trying to keep the load down to a minimum. And, uh, and that's why I have two tubes in there. The other things I did, put a handle on top. Uh, I think I got that uh, in a box of junk at a secondhand store and a couple of some feet a couple two couples uh four feet on the bottom so it uh it stands upright i had to be careful with the wood that lamination was starting to separate a little bit so uh, a little glue made all that uh come back together and some clamps and yeah i think it could go on the road and of course i put a an iec style plug there so it's really easy to plug it in and put any length cord on that I want. If I want to pull the chassis out, I gave it a little plug in here that I think I've also pulled out of the same uh, same old reel to reel. There you go. That is a single-ended 6K6 with a 6SL7 preamp. Let's take a quick look at the schematic for this amp. It is basically uh, built like a Fender Champ style amp. Uh, instead of a 12AX7 though, you have a 6SL7, which functions as a preamp. Pretty much same values, resistors, capacitors, things like that. You also have a 6K6 in the output, which is similar to a 6V6. Um, the only difference is it outputs a little bit less power, uh, about four watts as opposed to 5 or 5.5 5 uh, with a 6v6. It's uh, it's a little bit quieter. Uh, you have a little bit less gain on the 6SL7 and that makes it good not only for guitar but also for harmonica use. I believe you want a little less gain in the preamp uh, for a harmonica amp. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But the real curveball uh, to this amp was the power transformer. I thought maybe it was going to be a little bit small even for this job, but I played with it and I played with it for, you know, 20, 30 minutes at a time. And the transformer actually stays cool to the touch. So it's definitely not overloaded either with the power tube or with the, with the filaments. And it does a really good job and puts out solid sound. Just for fun, let's go hear how it sounds. <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, there's a little sound clip from it, or a few, uh, and uh, hopefully you get a good idea of, of how it sounds. It's got a nice, um, it's not got a nice clean little tone to it, although it does uh, take on a little attitude, kind of like uh, somebody might have to go down and see the principal. So uh, I guess it's fitting. Anyway, I guess today's lesson, maybe the takeaway is, um, even uh, though the parts you have may not seem quite ideal, there are always little workarounds that you can uh, you can do to uh, make things work in, in many cases and uh, not only just make them work but make them work well and and safely too um, so until the next video uh, I urge you to go out and uh, build something we'll see you next time thanks for watching
Baseball practice will be canceled today due to rain. Whoever put Christopher Fisher's underwear up the flagpole, you will be caught. We'll find out. It will help your case immensely if you turn yourself in.